Lincoln, and a few others arrived in Miami. Don saw Scott's number on the middleman's phone, and the location is here. Sarah was arranged by the company in a hotel and couldn't get any information. Lincoln told her that Sucre had left and didn't receive any replies when he messaged Mahoney. Upon hearing this, Sarah asked him who he was searching for Scylla with. Lincoln looked towards the person over there and only told Sarah that they were all untrustworthy. After all, they were enemies before. Although Sarah didn't know who specifically, she didn't trust the company either. She told Lincoln that even if he got Scylla, the company wouldn't let them go. But Lincoln was just doing what he believed was right. At this time, Gretchen found out that Scott was at the bar. Lincoln got up and left to find Scott. Don didn't obey his orders at all, but Lincoln didn't care about his attitude. Arriving at the bar, Lincoln searched for clues about Scott. The bartender answered that there weren't any, and then he exchanged glances with Tia next to him. Seeing his actions, Lincoln knocked him down and then questioned Tia. Tia claimed she didn't know anything. She told Lincoln that she only knew Scott's girlfriend worked here. Lincoln asked her to take him to find her, and then he dragged Tia away. After Tia made a phone call, she showed Lincoln a message. She told Lincoln that the person would arrive in a minute. Soon, Lincoln saw the girlfriend she mentioned. When Lincoln approached, he sensed something was wrong. When he turned around, he found himself being targeted. Lincoln started a shootout with the opponent. Tia took the opportunity to leave in a car. It turned out that she was Scott's girlfriend, and she called to inform Scott to come and save her. However, no matter how clever she was, she couldn't stop Lincoln. Lincoln stole her wallet. Lincoln placed the wallet on the table and then told Gretchen that finding Tia would lead to finding Scott. But Gretchen didn't agree with his high-profile approach, which happened to showcase General's intelligence. He gathered the four enemies together, ensuring that there was no possibility of a rebellion conspiracy. After Michael woke up, he found himself in an unfamiliar room. The door can't be opened, and there are people guarding outside. Instinctively, he started looking for a way to escape. At this time, General's men walked in. He told Michael not to waste his efforts. There were only cougars around here. Also coming in at the same time was a neurologist, Dr. Roger Knowlton. Dr. Roger said that Michael now has a bias against the company, and he is here to help Michael establish a correct understanding. Michael didn't want to talk. Michael said that if he wanted to say something about Skilla, and that his mother worked for the company, he didn't have to say it because he already knew it. He told Michael that his mother is still working for the company. Upon hearing this news, Michael was shocked. According to Dr. Roger, his mother's just like Lincoln's father. They all left because they were afraid of hurting the brothers by working for the company. And Michael's mother is specifically doing research on solar synthesis. Michael asked him why she didn't show up when Lincoln was strapped to the electric chair. Dr. Roger told him that she was doing research in the rainforest in Madagascar at that time, where there was no satellite signal. Michael said he wanted to call his mother, but Dr. Roger refused. Dr. Roger told Michael that they would only allow them to communicate when he was willing to join the company. And this is the purpose of General sending Dr. Roger. Meanwhile, Sarah found General. She requested to see Michael. General told her that Michael would be back soon. And General told Sarah that he wants to unleash Michael's potential. Upon hearing that General wants to maximize Michael's potential, Sarah has a strong intuition that this is not a good thing. General's intentions are clear. He wants to use Michael for his own purposes. And Dr. Roger is working hard for General's goals. He said that Michael is as intelligent as his mother. Initially, she also didn't want to join the company, but she changed her mind after learning the truth. Michael doesn't believe anything he says at all. He doubts Dr. Roger's words. Dr. Roger looked at him and told him that Scylla is not something that can be accomplished by just one person. Michael still doesn't believe everything he said. He was about to leave when Dr. Roger pulled out a photo album, and inside the album were pictures of him and Lincoln when they were children. Dr. Roger said that if his mother wasn't there, how would this photo album be in his hands? Dr. Roger tried to lure Michael with the idea of family reunion, telling him that his mother wants to make amends for him. Michael looked through the photo album and felt very complicated. He said it was all a lie, but in his heart he believed it. 
He just can't accept that his mother could be so heartless, making them live in such difficult circumstances. Michael is very frustrated. At this moment, General can't wait to ask Dr. Roger about his progress. Dr. Roger suggests that it would be better for Michael to voluntarily join the company, as medication would make his thinking like that of a puppet. General knows how cunning Michael is and warns Dr. Roger to deal with it quickly. If Michael deceives him, he will make Dr. Roger suffer the same fate. Sarah is unable to contact Michael and is extremely anxious. She receives a message, but she doesn't know who sent it. She goes to the location provided in the message and ends up getting kidnapped by Lisa. Lisa directly reveals Michael's whereabouts to Sarah. She can't let the company know about their meeting, so she has no choice but to do this. She tells Sarah that the company is brainwashing Michael, and if they want to save him, they need to act quickly. Although Sarah is suspicious of Lisa, she has no choice but to try to save Michael. At this time, Don has already arrived at Tia's place but has found nothing. He complains to Teabag about Lincoln's lack of leadership skills. All right, we need to make a shift. Bagwell, I'm telling you right now, if I make my play and you go soft, I will sail you off that loft balcony and no one will bat an eye. My aim is true, Don. Keep it in your pants. I'll keep it in my pants. All right? All right, all in favor of changing the regime, say aye. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye. All right. Gretchen believes that Scott is working for the company because he can access the files once he has Scylla. And usually, the people who can't find the information are the people who work for the company. Don brings Tia's things back and says they're wasting their time. He tells Lincoln that he appreciates his efforts but thinks Lincoln is too impulsive to be a leader. He and Teabag have already voted, and it's him who will be the leader. Lincoln said it would be fine as long as he had no intention of selling Scylla. Don continues to question Lincoln's abilities. Just then, Mahoney appears. Mahoney's arrival speeds up their progress. Through Tia's credit card records, they quickly figure out that she went to the dock to pick up Scott yesterday because using her own boat wouldn't be traced by the company. Based on this information, they will transport Scylla out of the country via water. Several people quickly took action. Lincoln thanked Mahoney for saving his life. Mahoney stated that he owed him a favor for helping him catch Wyatt. Don found the dock boss and asked if he had seen Tia. The boss initially denied it but couldn't resist Don's threats. Don told him that he suspected his place was involved in a cigar smuggling case and that they would need to shut down for a week. The boss then told Don that he had seen the woman and that the man accompanying her had him park his private boat far away. Today, he was planning to take the boat to Panama. The boat to Panama had already arrived outside. Don immediately started searching the passengers. While they were searching, Mahoney had already found the target. Lincoln quickly caught up and apprehended the suspect. Fine, thank you very much. Huh? Where's Silly? However, the results were disappointing as it was not the person they were looking for. Mahoney and Don once again found the dock boss and demanded the footage. The boss said they didn't have the authority, but when he saw the gun in Don's hand, he had to comply with their demands. Back at the hotel, Don and Teabag had a heated discussion. Since there was no one on the boat, it was likely that the person was still in Miami. Gretchen found information on Scott, but didn't reveal it because she had her own plans. Meanwhile, Lincoln received a call from Sarah, who told him she was going to find Michael. However, Lincoln felt that finding Scylla was more important at the moment so that they would have leverage. T-Dag, who was eavesdropping nearby, reported Sarah's intentions to the general. Upon receiving the information, the general instructed Dr. Roger to immediately medicate Michael. Dr. Roger asked what to do if Michael doesn't wake up, and the general stated that they should accept it, as he wanted subordinates, not enemies. At first, Michael genuinely felt sad, but later, he was just putting on a show for Dr. Roger. His previous actions were all deliberate. As Dr. Roger prepared to administer the medication, the water heater suddenly made a noise. They went to check, 
and were instantly thrown off by the power of the explosion. Michael picked up a gun and turned the situation around. Now give the doctor his medicine. You're never getting... The general subordinates obediently injected Dr. Roger with the medication and handcuffed themselves. Then, watching Michael leave, at this time, the people sent by General also arrived here. Hands on your head. Just when Michael was arrested, Sarah appeared. Sarah didn't listen to Lincoln's words. Seeing that Michael was not in good condition, Sarah asked him what happened. Michael told Sarah that he believed his mother was still alive. Lincoln finally found Scott in the video. Just as he was about to have the company track him, Gretchen disappeared. At this time, Gretchen was meeting with Scott. It would be easy to find him with a photo and then find his phone number. So, she arranged to meet Scott. Scott didn't want to come, but he understood that Gretchen had a purpose in meeting privately. Otherwise, his information would have been known by the company long ago. In that case, both he and his boss would be in big trouble. Gretchen's goal was simple. She wanted money. Scott didn't want to be chased, so he agreed to give Gretchen 10 million. As long as she could eliminate the people tracking them and make the company unable to find them. Back at the hotel, Gretchen said she already knew Scott's information. He had worked as a spy for the company for 10 years and he was currently with his boss. She told them to hurry up, and Mahoney looked at her suspiciously. The others followed Gretchen to the destination, and waiting for them was the muzzle of Scott's gun. Seeing Gretchen also raising a gun, Don was very angry. Unexpectedly, Gretchen actually killed the people Scott brought. She told Scott that now she cared more about life than money. Lincoln asked Scott where Scylla was. Scott was not in a hurry and Mahoney saw right through his delaying tactics. He told Lincoln that Scylla was no longer in Scott's hands. Scott knew he had been exposed, so he pointed the gun at Gretchen. Although Mahoney acted in a timely manner, Gretchen still got shot. Teabag took away Scott's cell phone and two keys. Mahoney asks Gretchen for information about Scott's boss. Gretchen told him that she didn't find any information. Don said he wanted to kill Gretchen. But unexpectedly, Teabag opposed it. He mentioned that she has an eight-year-old daughter. Finally, Mahoney stopped Lincoln. We're not done. Keep your mouth shut. You get to see your kid in visitation. I know what the general will do to me if I talk in prison. Believe me, I know him well. As Lincoln listened to the sound of sirens, he warned Gretchen not to speak recklessly. Shortly after returning to the hotel, Scott's phone rang. Lincoln told the person on the phone that Scott was dead and that he would find her no matter where she was. At this moment, Lincoln couldn't imagine that the person he was talking to on the phone was his mother. Lincoln found several envelopes at the hotel entrance. He opened them and found photos of their loved ones inside. Mahoney's ex-wife, Lincoln's son and girlfriend, Don's wife, and Teabag's mother. I lay one hand on my mama and I swear on my life. Lincoln called the general, but the general told him to face reality. The general said that instead of wasting time, he should prove his ability to retrieve Scylla. Lincoln told the general that they already have Scott's key, but that wasn't enough for the general because a powerful opponent, Michael, has joined the competition. The general told Lincoln that Michael has escaped. He also warned Lincoln that if he has any contact with Michael, he should tell Michael that the company will kill him without hesitation. Michael escaped, and the general took LJ as a hostage instead. Lincoln fell silent. Originally, he wanted to save his brother, but now they have become opponents. Meanwhile, Michael and Sarah are on their way to their destination. Michael doesn't approve of what Lincoln is doing for the company, even though Lincoln is doing everything to save him. Sarah told Michael that if she were in Lincoln's position, she would make the same decision. At this moment, the general's men are chasing after them. But they didn't catch Michael. Meanwhile, Mahoney found the key manufacturer. The keys are very advanced, with chips installed on each key that emit a unique signal to open the corresponding lock. As long as they find the lock database, they can locate where the locks are installed. 
and with such advanced equipment, there is no other possibility besides the placement of Scylla. Although they are investigating quickly, Christina is even faster in getting information. She quickly learned that someone is investigating the keys, but she doesn't know who it is. Seeing that he was hesitant to speak, Christina asked him to speak directly. Her subordinate informed her that Michael had run out of the company and was heading to Miami. She believed that once her sons understood her purpose, there would be no problem. Mahoney had already found the locations of two locks, and they were preparing to split into two groups. Just then, Lincoln received a call from Michael. Lincoln was angry about Michael running out of the company, saying that he had ruined all their plans. Michael told him not to give Scylla to General. Lincoln said he just wants to live a stable life. This is his only choice. Michael said he wouldn't let him give Scylla to General. Lincoln tells Michael that the General is hunting him now and everything he does is for Michael. Michael told Lincoln that their mother was still alive and asked him to wait until they reached Miami to talk more. Police appeared on Michael's side and he used the little money he had to persuade a truck driver to give them a ride. Lincoln had been worried since hanging up the phone. Mahoney told him to pull himself together because they were about to take action. When they opened the door, no one stopped them, and the villa was empty. Christina left after receiving the news, leaving only a photo for Lincoln. Mahoney reluctantly told him a cruel fact. Based on various signs, Scylla should be in the hands of your mother. At this point, Michael's heart was in turmoil. Michael was very upset at this time. He still remembered his mother baking cookies for him when he was a child. He doesn't understand why it's like this. He knew that the company had performed surgery on his mother before him to bring her back to life. Combined with his own experience, he suspected that the company had successfully brainwashed his mother. That's why she allowed Lincoln to be hunted down. But this was just a way of comforting herself. It was surprising that General had kept this secret for so long, but Sarah found it reasonable. She was definitely unwilling to let Michael and Lincoln know that she was alive, so General kept it from them. But now the situation had changed and General thought he could use him, so he told him about this. This made Michael even sadder, as he thought his mother also wanted to use him. But Michael doesn't know that his mother and General are not on the same page. General does want to use Michael, not just for his super brain, but more importantly to control Christina. From this, we can see that General is no longer able to control Christina. Oren didn't speak. He just got out of the car and left after the driver parked. The General didn't know what he was going to do. He didn't know Oren had betrayed him until he couldn't unbuckle his seatbelt. He desperately grabbed a bottle opener and tried to cut the seatbelt. <sighs> Meanwhile, Oren pressed the button to detonate the bomb and left without looking back. Christina got angry when she heard that General was still alive. Oren panicked when he heard that General wasn't dead. He told Christina that he needed to disappear for a while. Christina also felt that he had to disappear, so she asked Oren to turn on the speakerphone and she directly asked the driver to kill the person. Don and Teabag came to the location of the lock corresponding to the second key. The location was a small church. Don asked Teabag to go in first to check the situation. Teabag was stopped as soon as he entered. He claimed to be an anthropology professor studying Caribbean religions and wanted to go inside to take a look. The man said that it was their holy place and only those with pure hearts could enter. He then held Teabag's hand and started sensing, telling Teabag that his hand was stained with the blood of the innocent and he couldn't enter. He knew this was his excuse to stop him from going in. He looked at the few strong men coming out and had no choice but to leave. Meanwhile, Mahoney was trying to extract fingerprints from the photo. He believed that Christina wanted Lincoln to see this photo. He asked Lincoln if he remembered the scene at that time. Lincoln was irritated at the thought of becoming his mother's rival. He said he couldn't remember anything. He tells Mahoney that she is not his mother and that she is a stumbling block on his way to freedom. Mahoney expressed doubt and Michael started recalling his childhood memories. He told Sarah that when he was a child, his mother gave him a building toy, but he didn't like it at the time. However, it turns out that his mother knows him very well, and he still feels this way now. Michael feels that his mother should be his fierce rival. Suddenly, the sound of a police siren interrupted his reminiscence. The driver pulled over and claimed that he wasn't overloaded. He checked the carriage and saw Sarah's pants, but he didn't say anything he locked the car 
and killed the driver. He then told the person on the phone, person has been found. Immediately after, he left directly in the truck. But Michael naturally wouldn't just wait and see. He found a side door in the car. They prepared to escape from here. This should work. <clears throat> The two of them took the opportunity to jump out of the car and he chased after Michael and Sarah into an abandoned area. Michael took Sarah into a house and gave her a stick, then he went around to the back. When he came in, Michael attacked him from behind and knocked him down. Michael found a note from his wallet with a date and number on it. He thought that someone from General had come to kill him, but the person denied it and then died. But Michael already knew who's looking for him. Lincoln calmed down and suddenly realized that the photo was fake. Michael was born in 1976, but the car in the background didn't start production until 1978. Mahoney told Lincoln that this was the message she wanted to convey to him. He investigated the license plate and found an address only five kilometers away. At this time, Don and the others came back and requested support. Lincoln planned to act alone, but they disagreed. Mahoney could only tell them that the buyer was Lincoln's mother. Mahoney reminded Lincoln that Christina may not be a good person, but Lincoln didn't agree with him. He told Mahoney that she wouldn't be like the general. At this time, Christina's bodyguard is urging Christina to leave because someone is investigating them. But Christina told them to wait. They would succeed in three days. Then she received a call from General. The General narrowly escaped death, and he had already guessed that Christina was the mastermind behind it. But Christina refused to admit it or compromise with the General. She suggested that the General gather her stupid daughter and his lover to think about the whereabouts of Scylla and then call her. At this time, Lincoln arrived at his destination with complicated feelings and entered a hotel. Christina was waiting for him there. Lincoln felt uncomfortable and angry when he saw his mother, who had been dead for 23 years. He questioned Christina, saying that she watched him being hunted down by the company without any apology. Christina said that if an apology was useful, she would definitely apologize. Lincoln stood up to leave, but Christina begged him not to go. In the end, Lincoln sat back down. She told Lincoln that she was also heartbroken when she left them back then, because the company is controlled by General, and General is dangerous and bloodthirsty. But if the company were in her hands, it would be different. Because she is a woman, a mother. Lincoln said that he and Michael can only be safe if they give Scylla to the general. But Christina said it wasn't difficult. As long as they kill the general, all the problems would be solved. But she needed two days to prepare. In the end, Lincoln compromised. And Christina achieved her goal and prepared to leave. Lincoln asked Christina how he could contact her. Christina refused. She told Lincoln that he couldn't contact her because she couldn't let the general find out that they had met. After Lincoln walked out, it took him a while to calm down his excited emotions. He wasn't as calm as he seemed on the surface. His mother was too important to him. 